You're welcome back. It's 20 minutes past the hour of 10. If you've just joined us, you're watching Business Morning. We're coming to you live from Channels Television, broadcasting from Lagos. We've now been joined by the Minister for Trade and Investments, Mr. Olusheg Mwaganga, as he talks to us about what the government is doing to transform the Nigerian economy and, of course, what is left to, to still be you know, addressed as we move on. Uh, we'd just like our viewers to know that uh, Nigeria is in the eye of the uh, international market in terms of the fact that we are we have been rated as the most watched economy among frontier markets. Uh, that was the latest report released by the Wall Street Journal FSG Frontier Market Sentiment Index. Uh, Nigeria comes ahead of Vietnam, uh, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, some of those uh, frontier markets that have been um, highlighted in that report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Olusegun, for coming. Well, thank you very much for having me. On the me. program. And if you've got questions and comments, uh, you can tweet at BizMorning. And also send us your email at businessmorning at channelstv.com. You want to ask the minister some questions as regarding the developments in the economy. Thank you once again. I'm going to start off with the report from the WSG uh, Sentiment Index, which uh, rated Nigeria as the most watched economy in the frontier markets. What's your view on this report? Well, to start with, of course, uh, we're very excited about it. That is coming up even at this time when we're talking about elections and we're uh, talking about those four years. And, it's, and everywhere, I have been to more than 60, 70 countries in the last two and a half years. Everywhere I have gone to, the excitement is there because the opportunities are here in Nigeria. When you look at average return on investment, in Nigeria it's roughly about 45%. Globally it's about 6.6%. When you look at what people need actually to grow their business, the, what we call challenges here are opportunities for investors. Of investors have opportunity to come and invest in power, for example, because government have provided the regulatory framework for that to happen. They have the opportunity to come and invest in rail here. They have opportunities to come, to come and participate in the Industrial Revolution Plan because government has provided the enabling environment and policies there. But so when you talk about what investors are looking for, I always say that you need four things to make it happen. You need capital, you need technical know-how, you need raw materials, you need the market. Nigeria today, the first two you can move, capital and technical newer. Raw materials and markets you can never move. And those are the things that Nigeria has in abundance. So I, we have a country that has 84 million hectares of land where almost everything can grow. Mm -hmm. We have a country where we have 44 solid minerals in commercial quantity. It, we're top 10 producer of crude oil, top 11 tons of gas reserves. So we can easily embark on a commodities-based industrialization. When you talk about, about market today, we have 170 million people. We have 300 million in Equus. Nigeria is going to be the third largest nation in the world by 2070. You can't ask for anything more than that. So I think it is that all we need as a country is to create an enabling environment and have consistent policies and have continuity. Once you do that, countries have done this before. We talk about Singapore, it took them 30 years to do this. We talk about Mexico, it took them seven to nine years to diversify the economy and track investments into their country today. We, this country, this government, for example, has only had four years. You need to make sure that you, know, you sustain, you consolidate, and it takes at least seven years to get that done. Now, I'm sure that uh, in that report, this was, I'm still sticking to that report, which actually pointed out some of the uh, challenges that we're still having in the economy, and this has to do with infrastructure. Yes, we have the opportunities there. We also have the challenges. How much of this has the government tackled? Because infrastructure is key to development. Because if we are the most watched economy, and yet we have an issues with electricity generation, we have an issues with our roads, we're still having, uh, having to register a business, is still a major challenge in the country, according to what the World Bank Ease of Doing Business report actually stated. What are we doing to you know, ensure that these challenges are addressed? The good news, again, is that you may recall that Mr. President launched the Industrial Revolution Plan in February uh, 2014. That plan is actually the plan that we diversify Nigeria's economy and revenue sources. And all we're embarking upon is commodities-based industrialization, where Nigeria has competitive and comparative advantage, where Nigeria can be number one in Africa and a top 10 player globally. As part of that plan, we, have, we are addressing 
seven enablers which we see as competitiveness factors. Access to affordable finance, infrastructure, as you say, you know, uh, standards, industrial skills, business climate, and all these issues that you have raised are all being addressed. So, for example, if you talk about business registration today, you do have the ability to register your business within 24 hours here in Lagos, Port Harcourt, and I think Kano. But next week, I hope sometime next week, I'll be launching the first online business registration and e-payment in the country, which will make it a lot easier for people to regular, register their business anywhere in the world. There's only one small bottleneck I need to get out of this, which is the stamp duty payment, so that you just pay in one location. But that will be launched next week. We've been working on it, so, and the World Bank is actually working with us on that. In terms of registering, cost of registering business, I have, October last year, the president signed, uh, approved a proposal from the ministry to reduce the cost of registration. So that has come down. In terms of power generation, of course, you know, we've privatized power generation, power distribution. And because of that, we have more than $60 billion coming to the economy. In fact, that's one of the investment opportunities for investors coming to the country. That's not a problem. And of course, in Industrial Revolution Park, we're emphasizing industrial zones, industrial parks, where you have captive power in all these locations. So we, the plan is there, we are implementing the plans, uh, so it's not a problem. And of course, for those who come in and build the power plants, of course you have duty free, uh, when you bring in your equipment, it's duty free, and you have tax benefits also when you're providing infrastructure that can be used by you and other people. And we also buy the excess power from them. Power has not stopped people from actually investing though, to some extent. So when you talk about, if we give an example of cement, for example, Today, we have the capacity to produce 39.5 billion metric tons of cement. Today, Nigeria has become a net exporter of cement. Today, we have seen investments of about $6.8 billion going to cement, and that sector is employing 1.6 million people directly and indirectly. This is with our power. Most of them have their power plants, whether it's coal, source, whether it's gas source, and other. But they get tax benefit for that. So we're providing incentives for now until we have enough power. You know, if incentives are there to help uh, structural, uh, is to, help, uh, 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 to, to help address some structural deficiency which you have. So all those things are things we have taken into consideration. If the environment was not right, we would not start an auto policy in 2014, and within 12 months, 22 OEMs are saying we want to come to Nigeria. Okay, we'll, we'll look in details about uh, the auto policy, but let's talk about the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, which still sounds like a big word to many Nigerians out there. And one of the things, uh, when this was launched, uh, the president, President Goodluck Jonathan, was saying that the goal of the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan was to increase the contribution of manufacturing sector to gross domestic products from the present 4% to more than 10% over the next five years. Now, let's tie this to the devaluation of the NARA which has made export cheaper for Nigerian manufacturers and, of course, to make import a bit expensive. How are we keen, especially the manufacturers, into taking position to transform the economy through the Industrial Revolution Plan and looking at the fact that the economy has given them the, potent, the opportunity to make uh, their marks? I think you're making a very, very important point, and that's what we, the message now, in fact, when I meet with the business community, they say, yes, the oil price is falling. Yes, there has been some level of devaluation. Yes, it's going to be hard for the next year or two. We realize that. But what we want to see a responsive government do is to make sure we do not miss the opportunity. This is an opportunity to accelerate the implementation of the Industrial Revolution Plan. As you say, this is the opportunity to look inwards and start investing locally. There's a lot of naira in the system not enough of a dollar in the system. This is time to start investing. And you can see more Nigerians looking at that actually invest in the country. So if you look at when, when I say we have about 10, 100 billion investment pipeline, most of that is, is led by Nigerians today. So there are more Nigerians investing here. And it's cheaper to produce here, as you say, because even when you rely on importing finished goods, it's far more expensive because of what has happened. When you rely on, also on import, the raw materials also is expensive because you have to buy the dollar as a CBN window. However, if you're industrializing based on 
the commodities we have there. That's the advantage we have as Nigerians. That is where the advantage when you say, look, you want to develop things, you want to do sugar, cane, sugar for example. Sugar cane can grow in 26 states of the Federation. You don't need your raw materials from anywhere. Your raw material is here. You want to go to metals. You don't need raw materials from anywhere. Your raw material is here. It's iron ore to metals. So I think it's a matter of consistency, focus, and making sure that we accelerate, accelerate, not just continue with a plan. It's the government must be commended for having a plan. Everyone has been talking about diversification for years. No one did anything about it. This is the first government that has done something about it. In just, just three years, we've come up with at least six sectoral policies, six in the pipeline. So our job is to create the policies. Our job is to create the enabling environment. Our job is to encourage Nigerians and international investors to invest in this, and they are responding.